Hello and welcome to The Bottom Line on TVP World. This is where we unpack some of the main business and economic stories of the day. I'm your host, Marie Cato. Poland's nuclear is gaining momentum by the looks of it. Just this week, six Polish companies were selected to participate in the construction of the country's first nuclear power plant, which is supposed to go online by 2036. And the government has already started work on plans for the second one. Jan Kennedy brings us the details. What is now just a patch of sand in the middle of a forest will in a decade be home to Poland's first nuclear power plant and nearly one third of the project's dedicated budget will be invested directly in Poland. As the Polish state, we are set to spend over 14 billion euro on the construction of a nuclear power plant. We have adopted the principle that this entire amount must go to Polish companies involved in the construction. So far, the government, in partnership with contractor Westinghouse Bechtel, has selected six Polish companies to manufacture components for the plant's AP-1000 reactors, a move which in addition to supplementing the economy will provide contractors with invaluable experience. Stepping into the nuclear business is like getting the highest grade when it comes to the technical standards, the safety standards in the electricity sector. So anyone that is able to take part in nuclear project is getting a stamp that he is providing the highest possible standards and is of course earning a big amount of money because of the uh, things that he's doing. And with nuclear energy being one of the government's key strategic pillars, more domestic companies are expected to join the effort. This project has very sound political support which will, may bring much more certainty to various Polish companies, for example, who may uh, consider whether they want to join this project. And I think it's important that they have the certainty that this project will go on uh, according to schedule and will actually happen so that they can plan the participation in this process. Poland is working to reduce its dependence on coal, which last year dropped below 60% of the energy mix, with the development of renewables, including wind and solar, accelerating. Still, officials say more nuclear capacity will be crucial for ensuring long-term energy security. According to the current uh, energy policy, um, we should uh, construct between uh, 6 and 9 megawatts, uh, gigawatts, I'm sorry, uh, of uh, nuclear. Uh, the first uh, is uh, a bit less than uh, uh, four, so there is uh, still a large gap uh, in nuclear. That's why the government wants to build a second nuclear power plant. But should it be constructed by the same company? From the point of view of the economics of scale, it is wise to invest in one technology in multiple locations, multiple reactors, because you get a price discount and uh, a quicker development when it comes to one reactor after the another. This time, the government says the contractor will be chosen through a competitive bidding process. France, however, appears to be the favourite after both countries signed a treaty aimed at strengthening cooperation in several areas, including nuclear energy. Time will tell how this partnership unfolds. Poland's development of nuclear energy has been on the cards since the early 1970s. And here we are in 2025. Is this the decade when all the relevant factors come together, political, business, infrastructural, and Poland can start building and developing to its full nuclear potential? We're joined by Mikołaj Etigin, Professor of Nuclear Engineering at the AGH University of Krakow. Hello and thank you very much for yes. joining us. Perfect. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about nuclear energy. Our pleasure to have you. So obviously building a nuclear power plant is a massive endeavor and the government wants Polish companies to participate and six of them have already been chosen to participate in this project. And that's big news for those companies, a market leveling up of sorts. What are your thoughts? 
Yes, so it's a big step towards construction of the first nuclear power plant in Poland. So the Polish company are the, let's say, the main, main should be a main constructors of the disparate plant. So the so-called local content should be maximized. So the money which should be spent on the construction of the first nuclear power plant should certainly go to the Polish company. And this is the first step towards this approach. Um, and how many more companies can we expect to see participate? We see that the government has spent 14 billion euros of its own money on the project out of roughly 45 billion euros. And they say that this cash should go to Polish companies. But it's not only the construction we need to consider because there's also maintenance and operation mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, yes, so the companies who join so-called nuclear club, so the construction of the first nuclear power in Poland are very well known. So they are mapped. We know that nowadays we have about 300 Polish companies which can participate in this construction. They can provide also services, logistic, machinery. They can provide like uh, also the construction workers. So the Poland has some potential for the construction of the first nuclear power plant. And this potential should grow because this is really lucrative business for this company. So we should, we as a Polish citizen, as a Polish company should be not afraid of this construction, which is really very complex, very sophisticated and with very formal regulation. But we can do it. Why we can do it? Because the Polish company already part companies already participate in the construction of the other nuclear power plants worldwide and provide equipment, service, and machinery to these power plants. Can you give us some examples of that? Yes, for instance, for the for the plants in Old Kyoto, for the plants worldwide. So usually this information are not, let's say, openly available because this information are like a secret of the companies, but we know that they are there. So the uh, Polish companies, for instance, constructed some concrete element for the French nuclear, nuclear power, power, plant, power plants built in Finland. Um, and what kind of opportunities uh, does this actually provide for the broader Polish economy? Obviously, everyone would want their company to participate in these projects. So there are some real opportunities for international expansion to be discovered here. Exactly. So this is the point. So we should treat the construction of the first nuclear power plant in Polish as a test for our companies. So the companies should adjust their capabilities to, to go further, to go to the world business, the world market, and to participate in other construction. The nuclear energy now is boosting. So we can say that we have the renaissance of the nuclear energy. Many countries now they want to construct the nuclear power plant and need like qualified workforce. So for our companies, it will be a test that we have have this workforce and we have the capability to go further. Um, recently, Prime Minister Donald Tusk here in Poland spoke very strongly about this idea of the repolinization of the Polish economy. Uh, do you think that this building of uh, the Polish nuclear power plant will be an opportunity uh, to do this and also to develop some considerable level of expertise? Yes, sure. So we should build so-called nuclear competences. So at the all levels, so embarking of nu on nuclear power, the devotion of the whole nation, not just on the companies. So in this process should take part also governmental bodies, NGOs, scientific bodies, scientific institutes, educational bodies, and other other governmental services. And of course, Polish industry, Polish company. We can say that nowadays we are building our nuclear sector and we have good base for doing it. Uh, this can be maybe not the repolonization of the Polish of the economy, but joining very lucrative business for the future opportunities and benefits, but not only financial benefits, to building our competencies toward national security, because the nuclear power plants, the critical infrastructure, which should be really monitored by other by many, many means. And this security, I think, is the main point. Uh, there's also a broad need to educate quite a large number of people uh, who will be a key resource in this endeavor, uh, 10,000 people, if not more. Uh, from your point of view, how urgent is it and also how realistic is it to actually educate them uh, in time for the endeavor itself? Yes, so it's a crucial issue because like a qualified, skilled and trained workforce is the is like a guarantee of the secure and very safe construction of the nuclear power plant, construction in the uh, design timeframes and, and 
the costs. Uh, nowadays, we are starting just a few weeks ago, we started very good, let's say, governmental program when about 150 students can join the companies who want to join the nuclear club, Polish companies. So the government is providing internships for these companies. And this is like a pilot project where the companies are and um, universities I, are joined by the ministry towards implementation of the nuclear energy and building skilled workforce. Um, Poland's Deputy Minister uh, of the Industry, Wojciech Wrokna, uh, who is in charge of the development of uh, the nuclear power plant uh, in Poland, says that the government is already planning ahead for the second uh, power plant. Uh, but this time is going to be different in that there's going to be a competitive tender process. Uh, in your opinion, will this actually make a difference? Yes, of course. So the tender will make a very big difference because then we can prove that all formal issues from the um, from the legal point of view are clear the process is transparent so nobody later can um, can suit for instance the Poland, Polish government and company that this technology was was chosen, not the other one. And the tender is also very good because all companies can participate, of course, in it. And we can, we as a Polish nation can choose the technology with most most suitable for our needs. So we have the choice. And we know that in this tender, some companies will take part and maybe also the company who won already the first, not, not the, we, we construct the first nuclear power plant. Um, but from a technological point of view, there isn't that much difference between um, the potential American, French uh, and South Korean bidders. Uh, so I think the, with the whole package uh, from a financial uh, per perspective, uh, will it play an important role? Yes. So in the in the tender, uh, there are many factors which are taken into consideration, but not just the financial factor. This financial factor should sometimes is is treated as the main one, as a, like a, the key one, but not only. Also, the construction time is important, the power of the reactor, the type of the reactor, the and other issues. So we also can uh, take into consideration, consideration so-called local content. So how many products and services will be provided for the Polish company, not for the foreign companies. And this is also very, very important issue nowadays, that the second Polish nuclear power plant will be constructed by Polish company, not by foreign companies. Um, some might be tapping their fingers just waiting uh, to get to work, but uh, support for nuclear energy is not uh, a given. Uh, so there is still work to be done when it, at the EU level, especially among uh, member states. Can you tell us a little bit about who remains sceptical and why? Uh, and are the legal issues the main obstacle or there are some other issues that need to be overcome? Yes, of course. So the legal issues are also as important as technological issues on the in the embarking on nuclear power. Uh, usually, you know, Germany is against construction of the nuclear power plant, against nuclear power. So this is ideological thing, and I think nowadays nobody can change it. And this is German German attitude. There are also other countries which were, let's say, neutral to the nuclear power, but these countries nowadays want to are considering also to 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 invest in the nuclear power. For instance, the Belgium, for instance, Sweden also sometime so some time ago was reluctant to it. But the geopolitical situation, as as well as incentives uh, for the nuclear power, are really very, very, very strong. And these countries are starting to think reliably. They're starting to think not based on the ideology, but starting to think to provide cheap electricity and safe electricity to the citizens and to the industry. Do you think that the EU should subsidize the construction of nuclear power plants? Uh, it's very, a very important question. I think if nuclear power should be constructed, should be, uh, should be introduced under umbrella of the government, but subsidies like a money, financial money, uh, it depends on the legal regulations. If it is allowed, to some extent, yes, but the nuclear, nuclear power plant cannot be constructed just using like a governmental money. Also, in, also companies and other funds should invest in it. 
Poland has found an ally in France uh, on a nuclear level, and it seems that there is some uh, solid cooperation in the works uh, between the two countries. Poland and France have just uh, signed an agreement to deepen ties uh, on, a, on the defense and nuclear integration cool. level. Um, the two countries will support each other when it comes to nuclear energy development. What do you think of uh, the, the agreement? Do you think that it's balanced? Do you think that Poland can rely on France? I think that Poland can rely on France because the France is in Europe. So, so it's really really big partner. Considering the tech, French nuclear technology, considering the French attitude to the to Poland nowadays. So this attitude is really I would say multi-beneficial. It's beneficial both sides for Polish sides and for French side. So construction of the French nuclear power plant is a very good alternative to the other other technology providers. Uh, French French companies have huge experience. They are world, world uh, worldwide companies with really a lot of con construction. So these kind of, of deals, usually nuclear deals, are not just the deals about construction of the nuclear power plant. There are these about the nuclear fuel supply, about also other other branches of industry. So the nuclear power can be very very good starting point for really long term cooperation with the French industry and with France at all. Uh, Westinghouse says that the second power plant uh, would be around 15% cheaper uh, if Poland chose to use their technology. Uh, do you think that uh, the second power plant should actually stick with Westinghouse? Uh, so it depends on the on the priorities. So of course there is effect of scale. Yes. So so the second power plant in the Western health technology for sure will be che cheaper. How many percent? We don't know. But from the other point of view, this uh, considering the diversification of the nuclear installations of the nuclear technology is beneficial to have the other nuclear power plant because if there is some failure in the first one, there is no in the second one because they are in the different technologies. Maybe I will clarify. Not the technology. Technology is the same. They're provided by different technology providers. Uh, so from the security point of view, mm -hmm. it's, it's better to have like a two different different power plants constructed by different company. And we cannot forget that these companies also cooperate. So it's not like that uh, Westinghouse power plants is purely Westinghouse. No, there are some, so, some areas with their company have really very good cooperations. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to ask about small modular reactors, um, something that Wojciech Wrochna, Poland's deputy minister uh, of the industry, was an advocate of in his previous life prior to taking on his uh, political position. And it's something that hasn't completely dropped off the radar uh, entirely. He spoke very passionately about them when he was uh, here in our studio. Uh, so there is still a desire to include them uh, as part of the broader nuclear energy vision. And I wanted to just ask your thoughts uh, on the tech technology. Okay, so the SMR reactors are the future of the nuclear power. So they are, they will be implemented commercially soon. And the question is, what does it mean soon? Soon, it means not one year, two years, three years, five years, but probably 10 to 15 years. Nowadays, the companies are many, like in technological engineering companies, are working on the final project of the SMR reactors. But in principle, we don't have any SMR reactor already operational. And already, we have just the one reactor which will be soon, which construction will start soon in the Canada. So, this technology, I would say, is an emerging technology and is a innovative technology and is a future technology, but not technology which can be implemented very fast. So we need about 10 to 15 years for the full commercialization of it. But this is a very good direction. And what should be highlighted, this technology will not just, let's say, right from the market, large scale nuclear power plants. No. So this technology will to some extent add, add power when it is needed. So add, this is like a um, something additional to the existing big nuclear power plants. Do you think that Poland should invest in this technology? Of course. Of course should invest because it's the future of the, of the nuclear power. Um, nuclear costs a lot. So the question is, uh, even with public backing, uh, is the price of the delivered energy going to be competitive? Will it actually make a difference to the average consumer? So it depends on the type of the contract and it depends on the financial issue. At the moment, there are very strong incentives that this price of the electricity will be cheaper. So we know it on the base on the other countries uh, which already implemented nuclear power or 
are implementing implementing the past nuclear power. But all statements that this would be very cheap energy or extremely cheap energy, I'm a bit reluctant to it. Probably it will be cheaper, but it not it not will be like a pricing game changer for the for, for the citizens and for the industry. Okay, Mikołaj Etzingen, Professor of Nuclear Engineering at the AGH University of Krakow. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. And that concludes The Bottom Line today. I was your host, Marie Cato. We bring you the best of regional business Monday to Friday at 10 past 5 CT on TVP World. And in the meantime, for the latest in regional business, follow us on X and on tvpworld.com. And for more news and analysis, stay with us on TVP World. Goodbye.